What's up, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check here with your May 7th Raw Super Show review. And I gotta say, like I've been saying the past little, we just keep trucking along with the really, really good shows, don't we? I mean, like, we had Mania, which people are shitting on a lot now, but we had Extreme Rules that was a lot better. In between, we've had a whole lot of good Raws. Everything's good right now. Like, when we get to my score fail and MVP, for example, it's very, very score heavy, if you will. Uh, we start off the show with John Laurinaitis coming out explaining his actions against John Cena last week, saying he is the undisputed leader of Raw. Cena will not challenge me. Cena will not insult me. Cena will not even be here tonight. Nobody is allowed to make fun of my voice anymore, and if they do, there will be repercussions. Don't you know that I was a big star in Japan? In Japan, I was bigger than Hogan and Austin and The Rock and all these other types of things. Punk finally comes out to shut him up. You know, thank God for Punk, we need somebody to shut Laurinaitis up. That's all I'm going to say about that. You don't know what the people want, they don't even want to see you, you're just pissed off that you bet on Lesnar at Extreme Rules and lost, and at Over the Limit, John Cena is going to beat the crap out of you. Various other pipe bombs are dropped, John Laurinaitis gets pissed off and makes Punk versus Lord Tensai tonight as the main event. We have the rematch once again of a match that I think we're all getting sick of seeing, Show versus Rhodes for the Intercontinental Championship. Before this match happens, we see Big Show in the back doing his best John Laurinaitis impression and Eve basically catching him, for lack of a better term. Show versus Rhodes was not that long of a match. Show owns him for a little while. Rhodes eventually grabs his belt and takes a walk. He gets counted out. Show wins the match. Rhodes keeps his belt. Everybody's happy. Show call, grabs the microphone, tries to call him back, says, Oh, we're not going to have a match like that. Come on, man. We need to have a match. Da, 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 da. Eve comes out. Eve comes out and forces Big Show to apologize to John Laurinaitis, gives him all these big threats, you know, there's not very many jobs other than wrestling out there for a 7 foot tall, 400 pound genetic freak that's 40 years old, so Big Show goes all sort of inside himself and drops an apology and leaves very solemnly and all that sort of thing. We have Ziggler versus Kofi Kingston, a match we've seen many, many, many times before that never gets old because these guys are high octane, high energy, and they always give you something a bit different. Dolph Ziggler, every time he gets in that ring, is redefining what a drop kick needs to look like. Kofi looked damn good too, for lack of a better term. Um, whenever I say Kofi looked good and I sound surprised, I don't mean to sound surprised. It's just, as good as I know Kofi Kingston is, I've got a block. There's a lot of people I know of here, and you know who they are, keep trying to convince me that Kofi Kingston could be a main eventer. I don't see it. I see him, along with our truth and I don't mean this in a bad way, being the solid mid-carders, being the absolute backbone of sort of the mid-card division, and that's not a bad thing. You need people like that to be a backbone so that while other people are processing through, they've got people to help them along. Uh, I don't really know what else to say about that. It was a great match. Swagger tripped Kofi Kingston at the end. Led to a zigzag. Ziggler gets the win. I'm a happy kid. My fave five starts off on a good note. Michael Cole interviews John Cena via satellite. Where is The Rock to point out this hypocrisy? I would love it. I would have loved for no reason at all. Because all the shit at Mania has already said and done. I would have loved halfway through the pay-per-view to bring out a uh, rise above hate via satellite, you know, banner or poster or t-shirt or whatever. I think that would have been amazing for The Rock to show up for five minutes, walk around Michael Cole while he's trying to do the interview, troll -a -lol -a -lol -a -lol with the friggin' uh, with the modified via satellite shirt like Cena did. I think that would have been amazing, but it didn't happen. John Cena tries to convince us that there is no permanent damage, even though his elbow is being drained of fluids daily. The doctors don't want me to compete for months, but I'm going to be back in like two weeks to beat up John Laurinaitis, because I'm John Cena, and I'm super. Anyways, Cole accuses Cena of being scared of John Laurinaitis. Uh, John Cena in typical John Cena form. Well, he needs to worry about me kicking his ass, and I don't know. That's about it. There was no fallout. There was no... You know, nobody could really come in and interfere because it was via satellite. So, yeah. Next, we have Divas. And, you know, the Cena segment is bad when I'm glad to see the Divas. Oh, yes, especially when one of them's Kelly Kelly. Kelly Kelly and Layla, our new Divas champion, who is awesome, versus Natalia and Maxine. 
Um, anybody that doesn't watch a lot of NXT, I don't watch a whole lot of NXT, but I watch enough to know that Maxine is fucking hot and can come on my TV any day of the week. Oh yes, quick match. Uh, the match ends with uh, Layla hitting the layout neckbreaker uh, maneuver that she does on Maxine, and Layla and Kelly Kelly get the win. That being said, the layout is a pretty dirty looking finisher for a diva. Just want to put that out there. It's also announced that Beth, Ver Beth Phoenix, sorry, versus Layla are going to have a match for the Divas Championship at Over the Limit. Moving on, all star tag team match Alberto Del Rio and Chris Jericho versus Randy Orton and Sheamus. And I've got a couple of notes here, if you will bear with me. Alberto Del Rio and Orton have a great opening sequence in this match. Sheamus uh, beats down Jericho in the corner. Jericho works over Sheamus's shoulder because it's still injured from various things and you know Daniel Bryan etc 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 Jericho works over Sheamus's shoulder Orton uh, hits the suspension DDT on Alberto Del Rio Alberto Del Rio and Chris Jericho double team Orton for a while there is a RKO on uh, Alberto Del Rio a brogue kick misses Jericho and hits Orton so Sheamus takes out his own partner codebreaker on Sheamus gets the win for Jericho and Alberto Del Rio after the match Jericho grabs Sheamus's belt and starts taunting him with it saying I'm going to be the next world heavyweight champion and I'm thinking okay So we're gonna have you know Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio and then we'll have Sheamus versus Jericho I could deal with that I could also very much deal with Jericho versus Orton Which is another one-on-one -on -one match that I would love to see so my mind is turning all kinds of positive possibilities that could come out of this and then of course because we've had the the face team broken up by condescension we have to end it with an RKO on Sheamus just because he can oh yes yeah sorry clipboard is being difficult and I don't have lights so before anybody comments that the the lighting or the visual accuracy of this video is off yes I'm aware my light fixture sucks Let's all get over it. We come back from the break. We have Jericho, Alberto Del Rio, Orton, and Sheamus all fighting in Laurinaitis' office. And he says, fuck it. You guys are having a fatal four-way over the limit. Basically, get out of my office. Brodus Clay versus The Miz. Now, I'm a mark for The Miz. I have fully admitted this. But th we are getting a ridiculous pattern with The Miz. Miz is being put in the ring with goofy guys being as good as he's ever been for the whole match and then losing to the five moves of goofy bullshit from whoever, you know, be it a Cobra, be it a what the funk, or... <sighs> Miz, I'm not gonna let the fact that he was squashed at the end downplay this match. Miz, up against Brodus Clay, who's, you know, undefeated, whatever, whatever, who's beaten, you know, Ziggler, who... Ziggler, who's a former world champion. Miz, who's a former WWE champion. Why are they jobbing to Brodus Clay? But, you know, in the context, this is somebody that's beaten a former world champion in, uh, in Swagger, beaten a former champion in Ziggler, and Miz took him to the limit more than anybody else has. So, yes, me, Miz, and any of his fans out there that are listening to my voice got robbed of the W... But we did not get robbed in the fa in the sense that, oh my god, did Miz make Brodus Clay taste his boot with ferocity tonight. And it was good, except for the ending. And basically Funk's a goof. Moving on. We recap the Lesnar-Triple H situation from last week. We announced that Triple H will be on Raw next week. And we announced that Brock Lesnar is not here, but he has sent a legal representative. So we hear Lesnar's music. And there's a long, 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 almost awkward pause. And who comes out but Paul motherfucking Heyman. Oh, yes. Comes out to, of course, a barrage of ECW chants. Um, comes out, cuts great promo. I would love, I don't know how it would happen, but I would love CM Punk and Paul Heyman to cut promo on each other. It would be fucking amazing. Lesnar's been mistreated. Today is... Today is sadly different from 10 years ago when we brought Brock Lesnar in the first time. Lesnar feels betrayed by the WWE. I'm going to read his statement. The statement says, blah, 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 yakety schmackety, I quit. Pretty much. I don't remember all the wording. I'm not going to lie. So Heyman makes his exit. Heyman on a mic is like punk on the mic, except for Heyman's not a wrestler. But Heyman can pick up a microphone any day of the week. He doesn't need a reason as far as I'm concerned. 
Anyways, we come back from break. We're supposed to have Punk versus Lord Tensai, and it's announced that it's going to be Punk versus Lord Tensai and Daniel Bryan. Stay tuned for score fail and MVP, because I have a thought with this one. But um, take nothing away from them. Bryan and Punk, when they were in the match against each other, phenomenal mat wrestlers, phenomenal technical wrestlers, as we know they are. Uh, most of the time, it was a lot of double teaming. Most of the time, it was uh, Tensei doing all of these sort of quote-unquote heavy lifting and basically Daniel Bryan picking the bones when he can. Baldo Bomb and that claw thing that he does gets the win for Lord Tensai. Daniel Bryan celebrates from afar and then comes in with cheap shots after the match is over. Now, there we go. Score fail and MVP. Punk had the line of the night in the first opening segment. He says, am I done talking about you yet? No, you're stupid. You're ugly. You have no friends. And you're still a toolbox. Made me laugh, because it's punk. Punk, with his comedy shtick, is awesome. Punk can be serious, punk can do the pipe bomb shit, he can also do comedy shtick better than anybody else in the WWE right now. Ziggler is out of the job house. Now, granted, that's because Miz is now in the jobber house, but whatever. Ziggler had a relatively decent match with a relatively decent opponent tonight. Won the match through mischievous means, but that's okay because he's a heel. Layla's finisher, like I said, looks dirty, especially for a female finishing move, and I don't mean to sound sexist when I say that, but uh, the Divas kind of get handled with kid gloves at the best of times. Also, Layla as the champion in general is impressing the hell out of me. I'm waiting to see Layla versus AJ or Layla versus Eve. Moving on, Maxine was on Raw. I was surprised by that. I'm not saying it's particularly fabulous that she was on Raw, but it's somebody else, and you know... With the Maxine factor, with the Natalia factor, with with the uh, Layla as the new champion, with Beth Phoenix on commentary, I was even okay with Kelly Kelly being on my screen tonight, which says a lot. Uh, score, Fatal 4-Way for Over the Limit, awesome. It's an all-star match. It really, really is. I mean, Raw has Bryan versus Punk, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, which is the let's buy the pay-per-view for this match match. But as far as what you have left after you take those two out... Orton, Alberto Del Rio, Chris Jericho, Sheamus. Sheamus is the new Cinderella story on the rise. Alberto Del Rio just came back from injury, which, you know, has a lot of attachment to that. Jericho's a veteran. Orton's a veteran. It's going to be a great match. Heyman showing up on my television. I don't even need a reason for Heyman to show up on my television. It's just awesome. Fail. Cena's interview. And I don't, and I'm not saying this in a let's bash Cena fashion. I'm really, really not. Uh, the fact that Cena's been taken down a few pegs in the past little while has actually made me relatively be able to stand him. And it wasn't that I hated the interview or the segment or whatever. It was worse. It wasn't that I hated it. I just didn't give a damn. Like, there was nothing to it. I walked out of the segment and I was like, meh. You know? I'm supposed to be laid up for six months, but I'm going to be good in two weeks. And I'm going to kick his ass you know, insert generic promo one here. Anyways, and let's just all agree that even though it is funny and even though I can make a lot of rock references, Cena should not do shit live via satellite. That's, can we all agree on that? All right, awesome. The Miz trend, I already said it. Miz carries, you know, the most ridiculous jobber level people to great matches and then loses. Santino. <coughs> Sorry, guys. In the Extreme Rules pre-show, carry Santino to a great match. Santino got the win. He got the win the next night on Raw in the Beat the Clock Challenge when it didn't mean that he would get the title, and then eventually his clock was beaten, so it, he got a victory that didn't mean anything. The Punk Brian booking. I am looking forward to this match. I am incredibly looking forward to this match because it's a great match. The booking leading up to this match is horrible, as far as Daniel Bryan goes. Now, Daniel Bryan won the World Heavyweight Championship off an unconscious big show, spent the next few months running from Giants, um, went to WrestleMania, got his ass kicked, got his ass handed to him by Sheamus' boot in 18 seconds, um, went to the next pay-per-view, was a great match, not going to say anything about it, but he lost. Second pay-per-view in a row to the same guy. 
and he came to Raw and one beat the clock by beating up a commentator. Now tell me how that puts him in the same league as somebody who's had a great title run for I believe six months now, beaten everybody that anybody could hand him, won at Mania, and won in an amazing match at Extreme Rules. They're not even... It's going to be a great match. The booking up leading up to it sucks. And that's my fail. But, score fail on MVP is over. Now it's time for the Fave 5. Rhodes lost to Big Show, but he keeps his title. So good for him. Ziggler won a match against a half-decent opponent. Oh, yes. Miz, bullshit. All I'm going to say. Orton lost his... Uh, Lost his tag team match tonight, but from that he got one quarter of a great main event match at a pay-per-view for the World Heavyweight Championship. So, he's doing okay. Punk lost, but he lost to the supposed number one contender for the World Heavy for the, sorry, WWE Championship and the biggest wrecking ball on Raw right now in a handicap match. Right, yeah. So he made a good showing of himself, even though he lost. MVP of the night, and yes, it's a sympathetic vote this week, I really, really don't care. MVP of the night for making Brodus Clay look like a legitimate superstar is The Miz. That's it. That's all for Raw. I really want to know what you guys think about uh, my thoughts on the, on the Brian Punk match. Because, like I say, it's a great match. We know it's going to be a great match. The way they are booking Brian, Brian is a phenomenal wrestler, let me reiterate once again, but the way they are booking him leading up to this match is making it very hard for me to get excited for this opportunity for him, if that makes any sense. Anyways, leave a response down in the uh, in the text box below, make me a video response, as, uh, as Deluxe Man would say, do what you do. But... I've been Spaz, your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep this conversation going. Don't be a stranger. I will see each and every last one of you later. I'm tagging out. Bye.